Among character actors, he's probably one of the best in the business. And that person is Ward Bond. He was born Wardell Edwin Bond in April of 1903. He starred in more than 200 films and in the hit television series Wagon Train from 1957 to 1960. Now, you may remember that we actually covered the show Wagon Train in an earlier episode. So you might check that out too. And we did touch on Ward Bond quite a bit and his friendship with John Wayne. One of the other ways that he is best remembered is for the role of Bert, the cop, in Frank Capra's It's a Wonderful Life. He was born in Nebraska in a small town in the southwest corner of the state near the Kansas and Colorado state lines. They eventually moved to Denver, Colorado, and that's where he graduated high school from. He initially went to a school called the Colorado School of Mines, and then he went on to the University of Southern California and played football at that school. He was a starting lineman on USC's first national championship team in 1928. He later graduated from the college in 1931 with a bachelor's degree in engineering. Now, John Wayne and he had the most enduring relationship, but there was actually one other figure that was involved in this relationship, and that was director John Ford. That trio basically hooked up when Ford, in 1929, hired both the Duke and Bond, who were former teammates on the USC football team, for some small roles on a movie called Salute that he was doing. He had a large number of the members of the football team in that movie. Now, when you think about John Wayne's lasting friendships, the biggest one that comes to mind is that one with Ford. And that's the one that received most of the headlines. But it's possibly because that one lasted longer. Wayne was as close to Bond as any man he ever met. But he unfortunately lost his buddy to a premature death at the age of 57 in 1960. There's a few versions of how their relationship began. But probably the most reliable is the one that came from the Duke himself. It said that John Ford had actually kind of put him in charge of rounding up football players to play in that movie Salute. Initially, John Wayne didn't want Bond to participate. He kind of struck him as an ugly person and thought he might be a potential discipline problem. But the director Ford liked Bond and went ahead and hired him anyway. Apparently, Bond didn't show up when the cast and crew were preparing to board a train for Los Angeles until the last minute. John Wayne said that he was the last player to arrive. He was an hour late, a dollar short, and one pocket torn, and a gin bottle hanging out of the other. He said that was Ward Bond. He basically drove John Wayne nuts on that trip. He spent money just recklessly. He was always getting drunk and disobeying rules. But the director, Ford, actually liked John Wayne and Ward Bond for some reason. And he decided to pair them up together. And the director himself eventually began to hang around them. This roommate situation that he had created caused John Wayne and Ward Bond to become super close personal friends. And they worked together a lot. The two of them appeared on screen together in 22 movies and two television shows. Bond was also very notable for his high-profile conservative political views. And from time to time, even John Wayne, who himself was a real rock-solid Republican, used to playfully tease him about being on his communist kick again. But that teasing was just the surface of their friendship. This was a friendship between two men that was much deeper than a shared profession or shared ideological or political beliefs. Their brotherhood was actually built on a genuine personal affection for each other. Now, when John Wayne got married in 1946, his marriage took place in Long Beach, California. 
just south of L.A. He was marrying a Mexican actress named Esperanza Diaz. He had met her when he was in Mexico City while he was on vacation there. But on the day of the wedding, Ward Bond was en route to the wedding, and he was involved in a car accident. Now, I'm not sure if he actually got hit by a car. I think that's what it was. I think he actually got hit by a car. And it supposedly broke one of his legs. Now, I don't know if it was completely broken in two or just fractured. But either way, he still went to the wedding and stood up for John Wayne as his best man in Long Beach. Now, that's definitely a true friend. Have a broken leg and still go to the wedding. Now, one thing that most people don't know is that Bond had epilepsy. And this made him ineligible for military service during the Second World War. He appeared in 13 films that were actually nominated for Academy Awards for Best Picture. That's pretty amazing in itself. During the 1940s, he was a member of the conservative group called the Motion Picture Alliance for Preservation of American Ideals. Their major platform was to oppose communists in the film industry. In 1960, he campaigned for Republican presidential nominee Richard M. Nixon. Bond died three days before Democrat John F. Kennedy narrowly defeated him. Now, his career had really taken an upsurge in the late 50s with the series Wagon Train. And that series was inspired by a film called Wagon Master, which he was in also. Now, there's an old legend that developed that country singer Johnny Horton died in an automobile accident while driving to see Ward Bond at a hotel in Dallas to discuss a possible role on the fourth season of Wagon Train. It's true that Horton was indeed killed in a car crash on November 5, 1960, and that Ward Bond died from a massive heart attack at noon that same day but the events are truly unrelated. Horton was actually on his way home from Austin to Shreveport, Louisiana, not Dallas. And Bond was in Dallas to attend a football game between SMU and Texas A&M at the Cotton Bowl. John Wayne was just truly heartsick when he died. He actually accompanied Bond's body back from Dallas and took part in the ceremony at sea that proceeded in the disposing of Bond's ashes into the ocean. In his eulogy, the Duke was quoted as saying, We were the closest of friends, from school right on through. He was a wonderful, generous, big-hearted man. It even got more detail than that later on, that he never quit thinking about Ward Bond the rest of his life, even going as far as to fantasize about casting him in various movies when he would read the screenplays. He said that he knew in his mind that he was dead. His mind would also try to trick him and surround him with the ghost of Ward Bond. He always said that part of me knows he's gone, but another part automatically wants to spot a good part for him. Now his acting resume reads like a who's who of motion pictures. It's one of the longer ones that I've seen. And there's so many of the movies that are just spectacular. Things like The Maltese Falcon, The Grapes of Wrath, It's a Wonderful Life. He was even in Gone with the Wind. Ward Bond was married twice. In 1936, he married Dolores Childs, who he divorced in 1944. And then after 10 years of being a bachelor, and living a hard-drinking life of John Ford Stock Company, which included Harry Carey Jr., Ben Johnson, and John Wayne. He married Mary Lou May, who was the secretary to John Wayne's business manager. They stayed together until his death. For his contribution to the television industry, Ward Bond has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, at 6933 Hollywood Boulevard. Thank you, Ward Bond, for the great character actor that you were and all those great roles you played. Rest in peace. Thank you so much for watching, 
and will continue to chase the classics.